you guys. I just filmed this whole video and I hit what I thought was stop recording and it's the same button to start the recording. So I was at the end of the video, I hit it and I capture three seconds and I'm gonna plop it in here over me talking. Three seconds of me realizing I hadn't recorded a thing because <laughs> it suddenly started recording and I'm like, oh no, that was supposed to end the recording. And it was like an hour. So we're gonna, I gotta film less cause I'm running out of time. We got an appointment for Little Felicity and I've got to feed her soon. Anyway, here we are again, fully energized cause now we've got some iced coffee and we're gonna rock and roll. But I am excited to share with you guys again, the products that I've kind of changed my mind about. These are things for the most part that I used to not like and I've come around to liking. And then there's like one or two things that I used to like that I'm now like, actually, I don't really like. <laughs> Honestly, it's probably for the better that I'm having to refilm because I got allergy eye drops in my eyes now and they're feeling much better than they were. Anyway, okay, let's dive in. <laughs> And when I told Tyler, he was like, you haven't done that in a long time. I'm like, I know I've been so good about making sure that I'm recording, but this is certainly not the first time this has happened. All right, let's start with the foundation I'm wearing today. Now, I don't wanna fool you because I have like powder foundation on top because the combo with this and a primer I'm gonna talk about was a bad combo. Anyway, this Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint SPF 40 is something that when I first tried it, I really did not like. I was like, I don't really get it. Like it's obviously a lower coverage product, more of a serum foundation, but I liked the idea that it has skincare in it. It's got niacinamide, squalane, hyaluronic acid, and of course SPF 40 sunscreen. But I kept seeing these ads like on Facebook, but you know, they're like kind of like Instagram reels or whatever. And they would be showing this product on so many different ages of skin. And it was beautiful on everyone. I'm like, okay, there's such a hype behind this. I own this product. Why don't I like it? So I kept trying it and I realized the shade is way too light for me. So I'm going to show you me applying this right now. It's way too light. However, the finish on the skin really is pretty. So I just added to my cart another shade because the problem is I kept in my mind saying, okay, I'm going to buy it again. I'm going to get a different shade, but then I always forget to do it. So it is in my Sephora cart when I'm ready to check out next because it really is beautiful on the skin. And most days I'm either not wearing makeup or I am, but it's just something quick I threw on because maybe I'm running some errands or whatever, or I just want to feel more put together. So I'm excited to have this in the appropriate shade. The dropper is great. I would say it works best if you start it by squeezing out. <gasps> oh, Jesse, you knew that was going to happen. If you squeeze outside the dropper, then put it in and let it so soak it up. I realized that's how a lot of these work. I genuinely did not know that. <laughs> and some of you guys taught me like, Jessica, you're not really doing it right. I would always put it in there, squeeze, and then pull it out and be like, why is there nothing in the dropper? Anyway, so that has helped that, but I, I really have come around to liking this and I am excited to get it in the right shade. So if this is something, if you can get yourself shade matched to it, that'd probably be better because it's expensive to buy. It is not a cheap product, but yeah, that's the story on that. Foundation I used to like, and I've come around to not liking, is the e.l.f. Camo CC Cream. I really liked this for a solid month or two. Like I'd even done a TikTok on it and like this and some other products that I thought were underrated and really good. Well, this, I don't even know. I was so tongue-tied the first time I filmed this and guess what? <laughs> I'm just as tongue-tied now. Anyway, this is one that I really think is pretty the first hour or two you apply it. It's beautiful, but I would get kind of like what I'm going to describe as like a tortoise shell on my nose where it would all break up and you could see my skin underneath the foundation. It just looked awful, you guys. Like some products, I don't need everything to last me 12 to 15 hours. I'm cool with something wearing down a little bit, but a lot of times it'll wear off kind of with your skin and it'll look a, still a little even. It's almost as though like the glow will come through from my natural skin and I'm cool with that. But when it looks so starkly bad, <laughs> That's where I have a problem with it and that's what this product was. So I think I can finally get rid of you, buddy. I've talked about you in enough videos. But again, this is one that has collagen, peptides, niacinamide, so I love that. We're putting little bits of skincare in products like this, but, oh, and it has SPF too, but yeah, not a fan. This was, I think, meant to be a dupe for the It Cosmetics CC Cream, which I, <laughs> that's another one I don't have but I used to really like, and I've tried recently, and I'm like, I don't love this on my skin anymore, and I used to really like it, but it does not look good on me anymore, so that's another one that I'd be in the same vein, not really a fan of anymore. So the primer I had paired with the Ilia product that they don't look good together is the Say Glowy Super Gel. This is one that I actually recently bought, and I thought was really not great because I was hoping, or I thought it was a highlighter. 
like a straight up liquid highlighter. That was on me because I didn't read up on the product more. So that was user error. Once I realized I could use it just as a primer, like a glowy primer, oh my goodness, you guys. It is so, so stinking beautiful. It's a thinner consistency. It sandwiches really well between a sunscreen and a foundation. Some glowy primers, first of all, there's a reason I really like glowy SPFs because then I can cut out the middleman step of a primer. And that's why I like the super goop glow screen. I love that stuff because it, it's all in one. I don't have to do multiple steps. However, I have other SPFs I really like that I wanna use. And so it's nice that I can trust that I can put this on top and it's not gonna pill up or look weird or look cakey. It looks really pretty. So that I've become a huge fan of. This is the smaller like trial size when I run out cause I'm already like two thirds of the way through or a third of the way through, you know what I'm saying? I will probably just buy the full size cause I really like it. But I'm glad I gave that another shot because I was ready to be like, nope, I don't like it as a liquid highlighter. I feel like you could still tap it on in that area. It's just gonna be a very, very subtle highlight. All right, last foundation I'm gonna mention is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay In Place Makeup. This is one of those like, it was five or six years ago, maybe even longer that I first tried. And I was like, I don't like it cause it was super, in my mind, it was super full coverage. It was super dry and cakey. This is what I thought. Well, now I don't know if they've reformulated or if it's exactly the same, but I love this stuff. This, first of all, I don't think is as full coverage as I remembered it. It's way more like closer to medium to me, but that could be because I apply it with the sponge and that kind of soaks some of it up. This looks beautiful on anything, like on any primer, any sunscreen, it always looks good. Whether it's a matte one, a glowy one, it just always looks beautiful. So it's one of those rare foundations that genuinely is good and it really does stay well throughout the day and I don't think it makes my skin look dry and cakey like I used to think it did. I know that in this line they sell I think like a hydrating version or something. I don't even think you need that. If you like I have dry skin and I still think this is just stunning the way it is. So I have the shade if you're curious one and two a crew which is a perfect shade match for me. I do need to get a pump though. This glass jar business is driving me crazy. I'm like more than halfway through and I'm so tired of using just going <laughs> I hate it. We're also spoiled with our pumps, you know? Kosas is one of those brands that their brow products, especially, I feel like are super hyped and they sell like the kit with their brow pencil, their tinted brow gel, and then their clear brow gel. So my thing was the pencil, at least the one I had was way too dry. It kept breaking, like it just, it, maybe it was just a bad batch that I got. So I wasn't a big fan of the pencil. Then the tinted brow gel, I actually tried again this morning just to be sure I still felt the same way and then I wiped it off because I my brows looked crazy. But the product itself I don't think is terrible, but it, the shade I have is awful for me. I need more of a cool tone brown. Today, if you're curious, I'm wearing the NYX Thicket Stick It brow gel. This stuff is an amazing like all-in-one where it adds the color and it grooms your brows, but it also really sticks them in place, hence the thicket stick it. It thickens your brows, it darkens them, and it really does, it's like hairspray for your brows. I like that most of the time because, you know, if I'm changing throughout the day or whatever, I get, my brows just start looking scraggly and weird, right? Well, some days I don't need them to be like crunchy. And this is one, the Kosas Airbrow, like their clear brow gel, that I kind of wrote off because I wasn't a fan of the other one. So I was like, eh, and then this one's not very good either. It doesn't hold it in place. But I think I've realized there really is a space for this in my collection because I do sometimes just want to brush something really lightweight and kind of breezy through my brows just to kind of hold them in place, but I don't need them to be crunched into their spot, you know? <laughs> and this really is perfect for that. I actually tried to apply this on top of the NYX Thicket, stick it, but my brows were already so in place. There was not much movement going on, <laughs> but it really is good on its own or just over like the e.l.f. Wow Brow. I love, you guys know, I've bought like a thousand of those. I go through them so much, but those do not hold your brows in place really well like the NYX does. So this, the Kosas pairs really well with the e.l.f. Wow, bro. Plus the packaging of this is just so pretty. I feel like my lighting is so dark. Hopefully Ashley, my editor has brightened it because it looks in the viewfinder. It's just a weird weather day and I've tried everything <laughs> with my lighting and I feel like it looks so dark. So hopefully it doesn't look dark because she fixed it. Thank you ahead of time. So this is kind of a weird one. I kind of liked when I first tried them and I've, I've officially decided I'm not a fan. These are, oh see, and it's already like looking weird. The e.l.f lip stains that they came out with. These do stain. They live up to their lip stain name. That rhymes almost beautiful. 
I have two shades. I have pinkies up and basic beige. I'm wearing basic beige right now. Like I said, they do stain, but you can't trust the color. I'll put it on and like looking at a swatch, the color changes and I don't like that. I feel like I can't trust what I'm putting on. Like, I don't know. Do you know what I'm saying? That's all. I will say if you swatch them on your hand, they will stain. So they stay in place in that way, but I just don't like the colors. I don't like that they don't stay the color you initially apply. Like it's just one of those things. And so I don't think it's really worth the money. I think there's better out there, but what is happening? I feel like it's giving me like a reaction outside my lips right now. I don't know, it's really weird. Anyway, not a fan. <laughs> This is a figment from Disney World, if you're not a Disney nerd like I am. This is from Epcot and we got it. It was like, it's a really cheap, you know, hard to clean kind of thing, but it was free when you, you had to pay for the scavenger hunt thing, but really you're paying for this because this is the prize at the end you get if you complete it, which again, they're also like, when we bought it, they assumed it was for a kid. And it was, like Genevieve did it with us, but it was totally for us. Cause she was kind of like younger than what, anyway. My point of the story is right when we bought the scavenger hunt to start it, they were like, do you want to go ahead and get your prize now? And we we're like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, oh, so you don't have to earn the prize that you're paying for. Anyway, this is really cute. <laughs> That's all. One of those things in life, like as a kid, I would be like, no, you have to complete the scavenger hunt. But as an adult, I'm like, of course you don't. Of course you're just giving it to me. <laughs> so a concealer that boy, I used to hate with like, a flaming passion is the Glossier Stretch Concealer. I pretty much hated a lot from Glossier because I just didn't get it. And again, this was like five or six years ago. Glossier was new, maybe even longer. And it wasn't what I liked. Like I liked more full coverage. I like, but nowadays, especially I have just less time in general to get ready for the day. This freaking product, if I ran out of, I would buy right away. It is such a staple in my collection. I can just tap it on with my fingers and I'll show you me applying it now into that purpley corner of my eye and tap it all out. And it just looks so pretty. And what I like is that I can tap this on and not put any tinted moisturizer or anything else on my skin. And it still looks enough like skin that it doesn't look weird. Like if I were to go in with a full coverage concealer on my under eye and then not have makeup elsewhere, it would look really weird because the difference would be so stark. You know what I mean? And this one doesn't do that. It still looks like skin, but it makes my eyes look so much better and more awake, especially since right now I'm not getting as much sleep. So I'm waking up with, you know, purple under eyes, bags under my eyes, etc. And this is just so, so wonderful. I like it with my hands. I don't really apply it with a brush or anything else. I don't think it needs it. I think the heat of your hand is perfect for this kind of product. So I have the shade G10 if you were curious. So another concealer I've come around to liking that I used to really not like and I almost got rid of and I'm so glad I tried it again. I'd heard from a lot of you guys how to use this. So this is the Hourglass Vanish Concealer. And that is one thing I love about you guys is that if I'm talking about a product that I don't like or I'm, I'm applying it a certain way, you guys will very kindly be like, yo, try it this way, you're gonna like it so much better. And you're almost always right. <laughs> and with this, I was applying too much. I was just applying too much. And you guys were like, apply less. And wow, that is where this product shines. So a little bit goes a very long way. I just apply a little bit. Obviously, I today did it in conjunction with the stretch concealer just because I wanted to show them both being applied on camera. But typically, I wouldn't need them together. I like this best with the brush. I use my Sephora 56 brush that I freaking love. It's just so beautiful. And it really is long wearing. I feel like it stays in place. I don't even have to think about this concealer throughout the day. I typically set my concealer, but I don't think this is one that you're gonna feel like you have to set unless you have super oily under eyes. I feel like it stays pretty well in its place and it doesn't look super dewy or anything, but it also doesn't look super dry. Now, in fairness to me, I have really bad allergies and my dry spots are back right there where I'm constantly like itching my eyes. So I feel like anything I'm using kind of looks a little weird, but that's all right. I genuinely love, like again, if I ran out, I would buy again, cause this is one that if I'm like, oh, I don't know what to wear concealer wise, I just grab this one cause it's, I know it's good. So one that I think I was more mad at than anything <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm like, oh man, but like now it's out and I miss it is the Rare Beauty Perfect Strokes Liquid Liner. This is one that when I first tried it, it like exploded. There was something wrong with the packaging and I had black all over me. So I was just mad, <laughs> but it's like 18 or 19 bucks. I just added that this one to my Sephora cart too, because I genuinely miss it. And I didn't think I would. I was like, oh, I'm just going to use it up. And then 
No, I'm gonna miss like I miss it. So I think the reason this is so amazing to me is because it's unique. This is more of like a calligraphy style liquid liner. I don't have anything like it. I've never tried anything like it. And I've really loved how easy it is to get this beautiful wing. It fills it all in. It's super black. The swatches I have of this right now don't really do it justice because it's kind of dried up and it's super old at this point. So I do need to throw it out, but big fan, gonna buy again. And I'm really glad I kept trying it just to use it up because I ended up falling in love with it. So there you go. I'm a pretty hard sell on liquid liner being worth it when it's like $20 because there's so many good ones at the drugstore. Like today I used the Flower Beauty Forever Wear Winged Liner. It is so good as well. So again, you don't have to spend the money, but I really do love that brush so much. All right, another one that five, six, seven years ago when I first tried, I was like, I don't get it. Why do people love these? These are the MAC lip liners, just their classic wooden pencil lip liners. I have the shade Dervish, which is my Your Lips Look Better shade for sure. And then I have Soar, which is what I use today, S-O-A-R. One of you guys were like, every time you mention that, I feel like you're talking about like a sore, like S-O-R-E, and I've never been more grossed out by something like that. The idea that is so gross, and now I can't unthink it, so thanks. <laughs> Which is definitely a deeper shade. I'll kind of show you a swatch here. Dervish I love because uh, my nickname is Dervy, as in like Lurvy Dervy, lovey dovey. Um, that's a long story, Tyler and his friend, but uh, so Dervish is, it's kind of amazing that it is a My Lips Look Better kind of shade because it's also kind of a nickname. There's Dervish, there's Soar. So very um, S-O-A-R. <laughs> Here's why I've come around to liking these. They are wooden. So I didn't like them because they felt really dry and they are. But if you freshly sharpen it, that kind of warms it up. It stays in place so well. That's why I'm like, man, because I'd applied Soar and then I put on that stupid elf, um, stain and I feel like it's making everything look weird and like bleeding out and again another weird phrase but when it's paired with like literally any other lip product these stay in place so well they make the line of your lips so crisp and it does not budge for hours and hours so that is why because it is drier I really think that's where the magic is it stays in place so well I'm a big fan of plenty of retractable really creamy lip liners and that I do think still stay in place but these are kind of unmatched when it comes to like longevity so I wanted to mention it because I really do like it. I have the shade Cherry as well, which is a beautiful blue-toned red. I think that's everything <laughs> for the second time around. But yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this style of video. This is something I don't know that I could do all the time, but definitely maybe once or twice a year just to really think through things that have changed because I do first impression, just try on haul style videos all the time. And you know, I do my speed reviews where I update you a month or two later, but even from there, my opinions can change. And I don't always have the space to remember to be like, oh, I need to tell them like, hey, don't buy that. I've changed my mind on it or whatever it might be. So yeah, I hope this was fun. If you did enjoy it, I'll link my drugstore makeup videos playlist. I know not, were any of these drugstore? Some of the, oh no. The only, now I feel bad, the only products I like grew to not like were drugstore ones. You guys know <laughs> I love drugstore videos, so don't think this is me being like high end's better because it is certainly not always better. So I'll link my drugstore dupes playlist down below as well as my drugstore makeup videos, just general playlists if you want to catch some of those. And I hope you subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.